This short video is a demonstration of teaching phonics in context with second grade teaks. And so I want to focus on pulling words and how you can display them and talk about the words in context. So let's say you're reading a book with a guided reading group, How Groundhog's Garden Grew. And so you would use these sentence strips that I got at the teacher's store. You have to buy them yourself and color, colorful ones are better. Um, they grab their attention more, and I'm going to pull several of the state standards for decoding multisyllabic words. I think I may have a one-syllable word in here, too, to re reinforce and review. So, for instance, the word garden um, is syllabicated after the A-R, that bossy R sound, and so students need to learn that rule, and so we can just do the swooping motion underneath that card. Um, I pulled the word crept because it has an instance here of a blend at the beginning and I put a box around the blend. That's another way you can highlight the phonics skill you're working on or pattern. And then finally in second grade they're still continuing to look for parts they know. Um, so for, for instance compound words which is actually a first grade teak. You could reinforce by um, putting a line in between the two separate words that form one word. So I'm going to use these cards and I can put them in a pocket chart next to, you know, line them up and point them out and read them and learn the patterns before we read. And then as we're reading, I can refer back to the cards. And so I would display those in the classroom. And then I would read out loud and say, little groundhog was hungry. Hmm, there's the word groundhog. And is there a part you know in it? Yeah, I know ground. And I see the word hog. And if I say them fast, it says groundhog. So we can use that card again. Beautiful, scrumptious, irresistible, he exclaimed as he crept into a neighbor's lovely vegetable garden. And so we can stop right there. And um, if students are having trouble with those words, we can refer back. And we've already gone over those sounds, so they should be able to successfully read them. So that's just an example of how you can use sentence strip cards to preview the words that might be tricky that go with the state standards. And then if they're having trouble while they're reading, you can refer back to the cards themselves. Um, I'm going to talk about two resources for busy teachers who want to incorporate phonics instruction into their teaching. And so one resource I highly recommend is a book called Phonics They Use, and it's by Patricia Cunningham. And the bulk of the book really focuses on the, the hands-on activity of making words, and it has examples, and it tells you how to do it, and it has lesson plans. This book also focuses on teaching word families or rhymes, so students can decode by analogy. So I recommend this book, Phonics They Use. I also recommend a journal called The Reading Teacher, and it's the flagship journal of the International Reading Association, and their website is reading.org. They often have articles on how to teach decoding or word study, and they're really good and helpful for new and practicing teachers. So I recommend the journal The Reading Teacher. Here are a few tips for the phonics quiz, which will be on October 31st in class. I highly recommend that you review your text that you've read and worked through. There are practice tests at the end of each chapter that refer back to, they're called self-checks, refer back to the knowledge of each section. And at the very end, there are two post-tests. So I really recommend that you do post-test one, see how you did, see what you missed, and then do post-test two as well. There is also a study guide on Blackboard, and there are two tutorials slash reviews that are for you to look at on your own, and they're on Blackboard as well. So I suggest you use those as resources, but really revisit your text for the phonics quiz.